An ordinance authorizing city officials to file articles of incorporation to establish a nonprofit corporation that shall be called the Philadelphia School Teachers Reimbursement Fund, Inc. For the purposes of reimbursing personal money spent by teachers of the Philadelphia School District for the purchase of supplies, materials, and equipment needed for their classrooms. Thank you very much. We're going to ask the chief education officer to hold up a minute because we have the, the uh, president of the Retired Teachers Association School District who has to leave. So would you come forward and then we'll have uh, Otis Hackney, chief education officer, the mayor's office of education to testify. Welcome. Please identify yourself for the record and begin your testimony. Good afternoon. My name is Emily Taylor. I'm a retired art educator with the School District of Philadelphia. Thank you, City Councilwoman Jamie, Janie Blackwell and members of City Council and the Finance Committee for providing the opportunity for me to testify in support of Bill 161061, the Philadelphia Teacher Reimbursement Fund. My name is Emily Taylor and I'm a retired art educator having served as a teacher and teacher support specialist for, for art education for 39 years with the School District of Philadelphia. During my career, I have spent thousands of dollars for supplies to support my art program. I was provided a budget to start and build a program at the two schools of my employment. But despite having a budget, I did spend my own money to purchase resources and supplies that I would otherwise not have in my classroom. When I started my position as teacher support specialist for art education, I became increasingly aware of the need for monies for supplies as schools suffered from reduced funding. Schools hired art teachers with little to no funding for their programs. As schools closed, art, the, art departments quickly, the art department quickly redistributed art supplies to be given to schools in need. Teachers have conducted methods to raise funds such as art, ed, art programs and exhibitions, auctions, and community fundraisers to supplement their school budgets. Despite these efforts, teachers continue to spend their own money for materials. They would quickly spend the $100 allotment provided by the district, which is available to every teacher. This is not the way to support our students and programs in our communities. There is a need for equal opportunities for teachers and schools to receive reimbursement for purchased materials outside of the school allotment. There is a need for a vehicle of financial support that directly connects with the teachers. It is my hope that the proposed teacher allotment reimbursement bill is passed to provide such an opportunity because our students and teachers deserve it. I would like to thank Councilman David O for introducing this bill, and I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak on behalf of Bill 161061. And I ask the City Council's consideration towards the passing of this bill. Thank you. Councilwoman Blondo Reynolds Brown. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for your uh, participation and for paying attention uh, to an issue that all of us here on City Council care about when it comes to finding innovative ways to figure out how we can um, deliver what all of our young people and children deserve, uh, arts education. Mm -hmm. We uh, must ask, oh, I feel compelled to ask, are you aware of, uh, of another, it's called the Fund uh, for the School District of Philadelphia? That which currently exists, and um, my limited understanding of it allows for the support for support services and programs within the school district. Are you aware that that funding currently exists? No, actually, I became more aware of it just through this process and learning uh, about what 
is what is available through the um, introduction of the reimbursement bill, a bill by um, Councilman O. Okay. But as a teacher, um, many of us are not aware of, of programs such as that, especially if it goes directly to the school and the school gets reimbursement for some specific need that we may not be aware of it. I, I, as a teacher, have never had the opportunity to get any kind of reimbursement or other than the $100 that we would get from the school district. So I to see. answer your question, no. Okay. All right. Then um, you, you should simply be aware of that because that, that is one of the factors in our deliberations around uh, this measure. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Otis Hackney, we will uh, certainly invite you to come forward. And as uh, you all may know, he is the Chief Education Officer, Mayor's Office of Education. We'll still ask him to identify himself for the record and then make his testimony. Yes, uh, thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Otis Hackney and I'm the Chief Education Officer for the Mayor's Office of Education. Uh, I would like to begin by thanking Councilwoman Blackwell uh, and Councilman O and the members of the Committee on Finance for inviting me to offer testimony today on Bill number 161061, which would establish a nonprofit corporation to reimburse School District of Philadelphia teachers for a portion of out of pocket expenses spent on classroom supplies and equipment. I appreciate the, important, the important issue that this bill seeks to address, and I applaud efforts to support our amazing teachers. Uh, because the School District of uh, Philadelphia does not receive sufficient state funding to meet the comprehensive needs of our schools, educators often spend their own money on classroom supplies. I experienced this firsthand both as a teacher, uh, when I was a teacher at Germantown uh, High School, and also as a school administrator here in the city of Philadelphia, uh, especially at South Philadelphia High School. However, this bill creates a potential duplication of services for supporting teachers across the district. Earlier this year, I joined the Board of Directions for the Fund for the School District of Philadelphia. The Fund, an independent uh, 501c3, uh, not for-profit organization that raises and administers philanthropic contributions to provide support services and programs within district schools. The, fund existing, uh, the fund's existing uh, organizational structure can be utilized to fulfill this task in lieu of creating a new nonprofit entity to provide a similar service. I thank you again for the opportunity to testify, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have at this time. Thank you very much. Any questions? Uh, Councilwoman Parker. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, thank you, Mr. Hackney, for your testimony. Um, I just wanted you, particularly because of Ms. Emily Taylor's uh, comments in response to Councilwoman Reynolds-Brown, a question regarding her knowledge of the fund for the school district of Philadelphia's fund and the potential duplications of services in her uh, response. In addition to that, I appreciate your acknowledging the out-of-pocket expense that occurs on a natural basis for those who are in the classroom, teachers and administrators. Unfortunately, you've walked both sides and you know there are three teachers and I think even four. I'm not sure if Councilman O himself may have been in the classroom. Can't remember, but I know Blackwell, Reynolds, uh, Brown, and Parker are, are both certified uh, <laughs> uh, teachers in English, yeah. uh, I believe. So I just wanted, and, and Emily was just here, to note that this is an issue. And it is one that, that does demand our attention yes. and interest. And it is my hope that with Councilman O uh, having raised such a substantive matter, that the administration uh, will work with the councilman in a very meaningful way mm -hmm. to try to come up with a solution that is um, not uh, viewed from a public perception and or the technical substance of how it will work is not viewed as a duplication 
creation of services because the councilman raises an issue that is valid based on the lack of funding that we know right. we receive and you acknowledged it in your testimony from the state uh, perspective and it is an issue that I think deserves our attention. So I wanted to commend Councilman O for raising this issue to talk about the uh, expenses that teachers and administrators uh, uh, incur uh, and, and work with us in a, in a way that we can find some common ground to address the issue. Thank you. Thank you. And can you comment on oh, your willingness to work yes. with the, the council? Oh, um, yes. Our, I, I think, you know, you know, with uh, me being here talking about what uh, resources are available or the infrastructure that exists to getting the word out to teachers. So as I was sitting here hearing that uh, teachers may not know about the fund. How do we make sure that they are aware, you know, the teachers and building principals of how to utilize that so that way we can cover the cost of um, different projects or expenses that uh, teachers incur. I can tell you as a former teacher and principal, I've come out of pocket many times. My wife rem reminded me over the weekend when I was thinking about today how much we spent over the years um, in terms of, uh, you know, instructional supplies, but also helping children like buying shoes, clothes, food that I know that we have done, the Hackneys have done over the years, including Principal Hackney in terms of helping to close the gap on different programs that we always come out of pocket often. So how do we better utilize dollars um, in our schools to, um, uh, so that way we can cover the cost? Uh, some creative ways that I was able, if we were ever, ever to get uh, when I was able to get philanthropic dollars contributed to South Philadelphia High School, we would do things small like mini grants so that way a principal, a teacher could put in a request and ask for a certain amount and really be thoughtful about how they would utilize those dollars in the classroom. So there are ways to be really responsive um, and uh, to the needs of teachers uh, so that way we can limit how they have to come out of pocket, but definitely letting them know about how the structure of the fund is already in place to um, do exactly what you want it to do. And those dollars could be earmarked for schools and for special projects within those schools within the fund. Thank you, Councilman O. Thank you, Chairwoman, and thank you, Councilman Parker, and thank you, um, you know, uh, Chief Executive Officer Otis Hackney, you you are you know just a, a great reputation as a principal and as a teacher. I will say my concerns are this: um, I am I am very happy to work in any way. I'm just one of 17 legislators, but I also have to do my part. Mm -hmm. My my concern is one that, starting with this, that the issue of teachers um, spending their own money and and for the most part. The problem for our schools is that there's great inequity, you know, and, and so what has balanced the fact that some schools have more, some schools have less? It's been the teachers. Teachers who actually spend their own money to buy what is necessary. And as employees of, a, of, of, of the school district, um, first of all, we don't expect employees to supply their own material, let alone for the schools, to purchase basically um, fundamental necessary items. But, but they do, and there has not been a satisfactory mechanism to account for that, record it, make it transparent to the public. And even I as a councilman don't know how much money teachers and even parents are spending to support uh, schools, classrooms, and other things. The, 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 the thing that has been available to teachers that they seem to all know about, and it is not any other reimbursement program than $100 for the year. Again, for the second time that we've had a hearing, we just happened to go out to a fast food place. It's actually Burger King. Four kids, my wife buying food for all of them and a cousin, you know, cost $47, $47 for Burger King. Teachers getting reimbursed $100 for 30 kids or more for the year is woefully, tragically, horribly inefficient. And I understand that, you know, there are big fish to fry. <clears throat> all I'm saying is trying to fry all these big fish and solve, solve the entire school district problem to me is, I'll say, inadequate. A, if the fund for the school district of Philadelphia will commit to 
establishing a separately uh, created fund that its sole and only purpose is to reimburse teachers up to $5,000. And that's been a point of contention. You know, people say like $5,000. Yeah, $5,000. Up to $5,000. Not, not $5,000. But $100, $500 is completely inadequate. And I understand there's challenges about funding. The creation of a fund to reimburse teachers is just the creation of an entity. There has been no allocation of money for this. It's not costing the school district or the city anything. If you create the entity solely dedicated to reimbursing teachers up to $5,000 vetted and, and looked at by former teachers, then the challenge is upon whoever created it in this case, primarily, I think, me and all the other council members that may be interested to find the funds wherever we find it, corporations, foundations, to, to, to provide that kind of funding. Up till now, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, we have asked if, um, if the administration would be willing to compromise if we reduced $5,000 to $2,500, or compromise from $5,000 to $1,000, would the administration support the creation of the fund? The answer has been no. And it seems to be around the amount of money, number one, which I can't understand. Secondly, um, the, the administration, uh, and I understand, and I, I can't say, you could correct me if I'm wrong, the, the fund for the School District of Philadelphia has not committed to creating a, a dedicated funding source to reimburse teachers. There are a lot of um, things on that plate, and teachers' reimbursements historically have been very low priority. Um, I would just say that, you know, from the top point of view of fixing the school district, that's a huge, enormous challenge that I know a lot of good people are working on, but it's just a huge challenge. Mm -hmm. But on the ground level, classroom to classroom, school to school, we have teachers. And to me, the teachers are the, 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 the things that, the people that fill the, 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 the cracks. And my question is, can you either commit to reimbursing teachers in a way other than like a hundred dollars or two hundred bucks, you know, a year. Um, if not, what is the opposition to creating this fund? You said potential duplication. To my knowledge, there's no duplication yet. You know, there, the, 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 the fund for the school district has not created a reimbursement process. So, so it may create a reimbursement process, but it's just one of a zillion things the fund is doing. And, and then there's the, the school district itself. And we're not getting into, it has nothing to do with the, the, the contract negotiation or anything. As I've said before, I've, been, I've, I've had communications with some entities that, that are interested in funding, but, you know, but uh, not, not, we can't go further if we don't have a fund. So um, on behalf of the fund, I am a member of the board, but I cannot speak on behalf of the entire organization. Um, I think the executive director, uh, if, if possible, um, if you would like us to engage you in your office and talk about how we can um, set up that. I know from speaking with um, the executive director of the fund that she is willing to uh, explore the, this opportunity for teachers in the city of Philadelphia. Um, and that's why I feel comfortable in, in um, evoking uh, the, ro the role that the fund could play and the willingness that it has to uh, design such a system to uh, set up a reimbursement or some type of uh, resources for uh, teachers. Um, I can say that on behalf of the, mayor, the mayor's office, the mayor has set up, you know, his, uh, he's been very public about the luxury boxes in the stadiums that he has set up so that way the, the, the funds go to the Fund for Philadelphia, uh, for the School District of Philadelphia to support schools and teachers in those efforts. And so how do we just make sure, how do we ensure that that information is out to teachers and they know how to access those resources and or how do we make sure that those that would like to donate contribute and you know philanthropic dollars towards the fund so that way that those monies can be earmarked for teachers in those supplies or special projects. 
um, we can uh, meet and figure out what would be a reasonable amount. I can, I can put my current lens on it, but also my principal lens and teacher in terms of when, you know, when you talk of like really large amounts of money, um, you know, when you say like $5,000, that's generally for some type of special project. And so how do you, you know, uh, create opportunities for teachers to ask for resources and supplies around special projects versus the smaller dollar amounts which help for day-to-day -day operations. But what can, still cannot be lost, and I can tell you from doing the budget process for schools for many years, is that when we are inadequately funded, it makes those choices very challenging, um, not just for the teachers, but at, at the principal level when they have to make decisions around how much money is left in operating to buy those supplies. Um, and it does vary from school to school when you think about some schools that have different resources or external resources or friends of groups that can help close those gaps and other schools don't. So we're not in disagreement in terms of uh, the need to or, or uh, why it's important to make sure that our teachers uh, have the resources that they need to, in some cases, just provide basic supplies for students. Um, it is it is a reality, and it's a reality that we've existed and, and dealt with for a long time. But the inadequacies in the state funding, um, and when those budget cuts hit, and I, I was a sitting principal at the time when the last round of you know, when a billion dollars was cut, and we saw, I mean, the paper was a premium, um, resources, pencils for testing, all of those things became a, batteries for calculators for testing. Uh, all of those things became a, an extreme premium, let alone the resources uh, that you would need just to run the cla you know, your classroom on a daily basis. So you, it, there's no disagreement in terms of the need, but it's just making sure uh, if we have uh, an, uh, you know, an organization that is ready, willing, and already staffed and has the resources and the means and the know-how to do this, uh, to do it. That's why you know, just advising on how we can better partner with the existing structure. Yeah, let me say that um, uh, I, I don't want to waste time. I'm not directing this towards you. I'm trying not to make it negative. What, what I'm saying is if we're just going to BS around this, let's just kill it today and move on to something else. Um, you know, I don't want to have a discussion about something about something. In other words, um, the... The reimbursement to teachers predates the billion dollar cut. I mean, before the billion dollars was cut, there was teachers, there were teachers spending their own money. Um, it, it's been an ongoing issue, and it's, it's not like it happened five years ago or 10, it's just been an ongoing thing. It's just been exacerbated by the current situation, and the school district is looking at a $700 million deficit and a whole bunch of other issues. For me, the creation of a separate fund means the only thing that fund is for is to reimburse teachers. That money does not go anywhere else, can't go for something else, something more important. That's the only thing it does. And to my knowledge, there's $85,000 from the former uh, effort by Mayor Nutter that is discontinued um, by the United Way, so there's $85,000 that they're going to give to the school district. There's $200,000 that was appropriated uh, for specifically uh, reimbursing school supplies under Mayor Nutter's program. And there's been, uh, at least on paper, another $200,000. So there's theoretically up to $485,000 um, available simply to reimburse teachers. I don't know where that money is going. I'm not saying that that money should go into this fund. All I'm saying is there has been money identified, but at the end of the day, it's woefully inadequate. And there has to be, at least in my opinion, if we're going to be serious about this, um, a commitment to reimbursing teachers. And one of the things that I'm concerned about is, you know, People fund different things. Quite frankly, when someone says to me, you know, should I give a contribution to the SRC, my answer is no. I mean, not $5,000, that's not gonna make any difference, but if you'll go to a school, or I'll go to a school, and we'll see what they need, and we'll purchase the materials, that'll make a difference with your $5,000. You know, some corporations, foundations, they will not fund the SRC but they will fund the reimbursement to the individuals, the teachers that are spending the money. 
Um, and so to me, it's a addition of funding, not a reduction or a competition for funding. And you know, the issue is that we've, we've had this, I guess reimbursement of teachers has been a, a topic that predates me, but at least this bill has been there. And to me, if there was a serious interest in creating a teacher's reimbursement fund within this fund for the school district, there would be a proposal, and there isn't. There's a discussion, then it's got to be voted on, and then, you know, it's not going to be dedicated, and then how much are we talking about? What's the mechanism? I would just say, like, um, here's the best I can do. I'm just a legislator. The mayor is another elected official. He can propose something, and, you know, the SRC could propose something, and everybody could propose something. This is just what I've proposed, and, and I've not seen a counterproposal similar, a dedicated funding thing. We know how much money is in, basically vetted by former school, Philadelphia school teachers who know what the difference is, and an, an, an effort to get money into it so that we will, and they will, and everybody will know that the money in there is for reimbursing uh, teachers and addressing inequity in our school system. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other comments or questions? Thank you very much. We would like to call Leslie Marie Grace, Barbara Bennett, Vivian Hansbury, and Barbara Severino. Thank you. Please begin in any order. Introduce yourself to the record, if you will. Hi, I'm Leslie Grace. I'm an art teacher at Nebinger Elementary. Um, and I would like to begin by thanking Chairman Blackwell, Councilman O, and the members of the committee on, excuse me, on finance for this opportunity to op offer testimony today in support of Bill Number 161061. I feel like I'm really fired up. Sorry, <laughs> I've been waiting for so long. I would like to emphasize some of the points I made when I previously spoke in support of this bill. Currently, the only form of reimbursement for teachers is a $100 allotment offered yearly. For further clarification, under the existing agreement within our old contract between the school district and PFT, teachers can be reimbursed for only $100 of classroom supplies. And I say that twice to make sure that there is understanding how little teachers are given for out-of-pocket expenses. Furthermore, though there are programs like the Fund for the School District of Philadelphia that does not directly support all classroom teachers in all subject areas, especially areas where we serve all children like specials. Their stated majority, um, their stated major priority of establishing libraries in all K-3 classrooms, though significant and obviously important, does not help support all teachers in the district and does not help support all of the classroom needs. This bill would not create a duplication of service, and if there are multiple vehicles for funding, then I say all the better. $100 and that's it. And if anyone in, a, in a front of a classroom or who has a child knows well, that's, that $100 does not go far. Furthermore, the Philadelphia Education Supplies Fund through United Way, estab, um, established by Michael Mayor Nutter, I'm going all backwards here, Mayor Michael Nutter, in which the school district applied on behalf of all schools, is no longer effect, in effect. Even if it was, it was not something that all teachers had equitable access to. Regardless, this bill is just to establish a transparent nonprofit to help support our city's hardworking teachers who spend their own hard-earned hard dollars on their students. Why is it accepted and expected as the norm for teachers to pay out of their wages? Teachers are professionals and we should be treated as such. If we spend our own money on our students, we should be reimbursed. I fail to see why this bill would not be supported as it would be a nonprofit and it would only do good to help raise the equity of education in our district. 
I have personally paid for over $12,000 of supplies, furnitures, and technology for my classroom over the past four years. In addition, wanting to ensure that my students have an equitable education to that of their counterparts in more affluent areas or districts, I've had to hustle and grovel for funding, as well as paying out of my own pocket. I've spent countless hours fundraising for my room, begging family members, friends, and the greater community. And in total, I've raised over $20,000 in the past four years. Though I am grateful for my $100 allotment, that amount clearly cannot support a classroom. Please do not pause for cause. Please do not take a step back. This is a fund that is urgently needed to support all teachers, all classrooms, and would have a direct positive effect on all students at no loss to the city and no loss to the school district. If we want to ensure the equitable education of our city's students, then this bill needs support. We're losing great teachers in our city to more affluent school districts where they are provided with budgets, fundamental supplies, and are valued in their role as a professional educator. I would also like to submit into the records a petition with 231 signatures, and growing, I might add, in support of Bill 161061. Please show your support of our city's teachers and schools. Please vote to move this bill out of committee with a favorable recommendation. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. My name is Vivian Hansberry, and I'm a, I am a retired teacher of 25 years. I am also the president of the Philadelphia Public Schools Employees Retirees Association and the regional director of the Pennsylvania State Association of Retirees. When I, when my organizations heard about Councilman O's bill, I was amazed. I said to myself, so the clock has reversed to over 25 years, and yet teachers are still required to use our personal funds to provide the necessary materials that children need in our classroom especially children with special needs. So my organizations are here to support Bill 16106. I think the teachers, the mere fact that teachers are willing to still use personal funds for basic classroom supplies is a testament to their dedication to the students but also an indictment of a system that puts them in a position that requires them to use personal funds for basic supplies. The need for the replenishment of basic supplies increases as the school year needs. We talk about the progress of students, but yet, we are unwilling to provide those necessary materials that are needed to ensure that our children progress. So the two people who preceded me said most of what I was going to say, so I will shorten my testimony to just say to the city council, this is a need. You sat in somebody's classroom you achieve because we teachers taught you the skills that you need to achieve. How dare you say it? you cannot find the funds and provide the funds for children to achieve. This is an excellent bill and we encourage you to pass the bill. My two organizations are willing to do anything that you deem necessary to ensure that this bill pass. I thank you so much for your time. And we are looking forward that one day we will see on the internet that this bill has passed. Thank you so much. Thank you. I will be very brief in my uh, presentation and my request for the support of uh, Bill 161061. And I'd say, like to say good afternoon to Chairperson uh, Council Lady Blackwell, 
and to the honorable council members who are present. And as a past employee of the Philadelphia Public School System, I fully support this bill. Could you give us your name for the record? Oh, Barbara please? Barnett. Sorry. Thank you. Is it Barnett? It's not Bennett? No, Barnett. Barnett. Yes. Thank you. For more than 42 years, I was employed as a school district teacher. I have had several different uh, uh, I've had several different employments in the district, but mainly my main focus was in the classroom. And as a classroom teacher, it was my pleasure to share with the students in a number of different schools from, I was, my certification was K through 12, but I worked in the junior high school mainly and in the high school, the um, high school for creative and performing arts. I am now the proud grandmother of two graduates, and I have one grandchild who is a current student at the High the Science Leadership Academy. And I have the one who graduated, one of the students who graduated has been the recipient of a lot of help from the, his school and his school principal, as well as his teachers. They have sought funds or and they have provided funds for his education. Uh, fortunately, um, we have had to uh, supplement some of that because they did a number of very special things. They had ex an exchange program that had to be funded and of course that was provided. Some of the teachers provided funds for that. Uh, I also, as a grandmother, helped to provide that. Uh, the generous proceeds from the teacher's pocket uh, was greatly appreciated and it was beneficial to not only my grandchildren but to the other students in that classroom. During my school district tenure, I too supplied monies for students who were in need of various things for trips, for trips to the theater, uh, to projects that they provided, individual projects and travel that they had to do for some of their performances. There must be a, a direct interest in providing funds for the, the budget for providing teachers with reimbursement. It is important that you look at your conscience and say, I too will support Bill 161061 for the benefit of the students of the school district. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you very much. We note that United Way Barbara Savarino has submitted testimony. The stenographer should have it in all of us in our packets. That was to be written only, so we will submit it as is requested. Thank Any you. questions or comments? Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies. Thank you for hearing us.